Have I then the lost? But why now? After all this time? Why what now? No. Oh, I'm not sure you'd believe me if I told you. After all we've been through. I doubt there's anything that could surprise me at this point. <laughs> all right then. Rouse Joshua and meet me in the mess. We'll talk there. I see we're all here. So, what is it this time? I'm not sure yet. The letter delivered to my chambers omitted a few crucial details. Do we know its provenance? That was one of the details it omitted. But whoever the sender was, it seems the dame held them in high enough regard to point them in our direction. The dame? Well, she's not one to waste our time. It must be important. Important might be an understatement. If the letter is to be believed, Leviathan's dominant is in danger. And someone wants us to save him. Leviathan? So the Warden of Water has finally returned. What has it been? A hundred years? More. The lost moniker dates back at least that long. Even our venerable Lawsman would not have been so much as a glint in his father's eye when last the mighty serpent brought his crushing waves to bear upon the realm. But why the gap? I know it can be a few years before a new Dominant's born. But over a century? Should the Dominant of Water's bloodline have been severed somehow, it could have prevented a new Dominant from awakening. But if one has awakened now, he couldn't have chosen a worse time. Every nation in the realm has lost its Dominant. If word gets out that there is still one to be had, they will stop at nothing to claim it for their own. And the twins will be at war again, just when humanity most needs to come together. Did the letter say anything else? Only that if I wish to know more, we must meet in person. And that the Vale can arrange a meeting. Hmm. If nothing else, you can be certain it ain't a trap. <laughs> Famous last words. I'm coming with you. As am I. Thank you. Both of you. And Otto? Yeah, yeah. I'll keep an eye on things here. Didn't fancy coming anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I shall leave the Invincible in your capable hands. I'm looking for a Layla. <laughs> you found one. So, will your friends be joining in? Or just watching? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not here for your services. We simply want to talk. What you do with your time is up to you. The price is still the same. <laughs> uh, we're here about the letter. Oh. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I suppose you'll be wanting to know who wrote it, then. Among other things. Look, I'm just the messenger here. There's only so much I can tell you. Specifically? A location, north of town, on the shore of Eilafeist Bay. There you'll find a tent and the woman who can answer your questions. And that's all? Nothing else? Actually? One thing, there's more than flowers in the meadows these days. So keep that sword of yours to hand. The embers are still warm. So you're Sid.
I suppose I must be. Which means you have me at a disadvantage. Apologies. I am Shula, tributary of Messidia, final haven of the Morts of Water. The Morts of Water? The very tribe into which it was believed Leviathan's Dominant was born. A people notable for their sapphire eyes and ivory hair. Yes, that would be impossible, since the tribe famously... Vanished. Was exterminated. <laughs> Despite the best efforts of both church and state, we are still very much alive. Though we've managed to keep that fact hidden from good Grieger's faithful for over a century. Along with Leviathan's dominant. That wave out there. What do you know of it? The Surge. Only that it's been there a long time. Since the fall of Drake's Eye almost a century ago. Some claim the two are connected, but none can speak with any certainty. So in other words, you know nothing. Not that I'll hold it against you. The wave was raised by Leviathan in an act of rage. Moments before the waters were stayed, and the Icon and its dominant bound within. And you want us to... Rescue him. Yes. You see, a little bird told me about a certain outlaw with a singular knack for putting unruly dominance in their place. And ours is about as unruly as they get. For years, we've searched for someone who could hold their own against an icon. Someone just like you. So what do you say? Will you help us? What exactly did your dominant do to warrant this punishment? What did he do? He committed the greatest crime one of his kind can. He was born. But he deserves a better fate than the one my people forced upon him. He deserves to be free. As do we all. Very well. Far-fetched though your tale may seem. Something tells me you speak in earnest. So we will do what we can for your dominant. But first, you will tell us everything you know about him and the means of his imprisonment. I can do better than that. I can show you. Care to take a trip across the bay? My people await you there. Lead the way. Right, you might want to hold on to something. We're coming up on the wall, and passing through can take a bit of getting used to. I don't see any wall. Of course you don't. That's the point. It's a glamour woven by our ancestors to keep our village hidden from prying eyes. But don't take my word for it. Watch. of Bacchus wine. Clive, the sky. It's blue, but how is that possible? You do know what a glamour is, 
don't you? Ours just happens to work both ways, and a good thing too. I wouldn't fancy staring at those sickly clouds every day. And that concludes our little voyage. We're here. It's a long slog to the village, and a hard one. I uh, hope you're up for a climb. You didn't think we'd arrive, did you? The village isn't up here. It's on the other side of the mountain. Of course it is. Few have ever set eyes on what I'm about to show you. Just so you know. This... is not what I expected. Welcome, my friends, to Mesidia. saw the north looking so so alive How i'm is... sure you have plenty of questions but it's been a long journey and i expect we could all do with a rest our humble village is only a short way from here if you'd care to accompany me let's get ourselves in front of a fire and i'll tell you everything you need to know On evening tides. Does morning's light return? Open the gates! The tributary is home! Size of that dog? All right now, back to your duties. You'll have to forgive my people their curiosity. We don't get many visitors. Or any, truth be told. Then we are honored to be the first. This is quite extraordinary. Like stepping into another world. So do you believe me now? You've made it difficult not to, my lady. But how did your people chance to settle here, in the north? Unless I am much mistaken, the moats of water long called the coasts of Southern Ash their home. Until Drake's horn fell and the blight forced them ever inland, where... We met our doom, along with our dominant. I see you've read the Gregorian Church's account, but perhaps you'd like to hear ours. That building over there is the Witten Hall. It's where my people gather to discuss matters of import. We can speak more inside, 
once the place is ready to receive you. It shouldn't take long, but you're welcome to explore the village while I see to things. Thank you. We'll do just that. So what do you think of our little haven in the woods? It might not have all the comforts of a southern settlement, but at least it's ours. And there's a lot to be said for that. It can't have been easy keeping this place a secret. Not easy, no. We've dedicated our lives to maintaining the glamour that conceals us. Us, and Walius. This man, Walius. Is he Leviathan's dominant? That's right. Though he's no man, Walius is still a baby. A baby? Forgive me, but you said that the dominant and his icon were bound inside the Surge almost a century ago. That would surely make him older still. It would, if he'd been allowed to age. But the spell robbed the poor bairn of even that. I'm sorry. Walius was the son of my great-grandfather. Leviathan awoke within him almost immediately. But instead of allowing the lad to live out his life as a valued member of the community, my ancestors sought to put his power to other uses. Sadly for them, the Icon sensed their treachery and summoned a wave so large it would have swallowed the entire village if my ancestors hadn't stopped him. Then it is not the surge that binds the child, but time itself. Yes. Forgive me. I'm still not sure I understand. I'm not surprised. It isn't the easiest thing to explain. Which is why it might be better if I took you to see him. Show you exactly what he has to endure. That is why we came. Then let us be off. There's a road that leads north from the village. It'll take us right into the surge. Are you bound for the wave, tributary? We are, Delina. Have you spread the word about our guests? I have. Everyone knows to treat them as family. You shouldn't have any trouble now, but just in case, I would have you accept this symbol of our people. That's very kind. I look forward to meeting the family. The feeling's mutual. Should the tributary be indisposed, feel free to ask me any questions you might have regarding the village, and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you. We will. Then I bid you good tide. You are Sid, aren't you? The man the tributary told us about. I wonder if you could help me. With what exactly? Oh, nothing too troublesome. Do you know my husband, Pavart? He's the village smith, among, among other things. Anyway, his name day is not far off, and I wanted to make a gift for him. He's a craftsman, you see, and he's been fretting about running low on the flowers he uses for dye making, so I wondered if you might collect some for me and give them to him. Uh, would this gift not be better coming from you? Perhaps, but it can't, for reasons I can't go into. Please, I know it sounds daft, but I'd be ever so grateful. Fine. Which flowers does your husband need? The sweet little blue ones that grow around the fount. Elder's blessings, they're called. We use them to dye our fabric so we always feel close to water like they are. You don't need to go to the trouble of picking them yourself, though. Just speak to the field hands and ask them to share their harvest with you. Two basketfuls should be enough for my husband to be getting on with. 
Two basketfuls it is. Ah, welcome to Haven, friend. Thank you. Forgive my presumptuousness, but the smith's wife has asked me to make her husband a present of some elder's blessings. Two basketfuls, to be precise. Well, I have one, if that's any help. It is. I'm much obliged. They really are beautiful. Aren't they just? Though that's not the only reason they have a special place in our hearts. Legend has it that when our people fled from Ash, the tributary of the time took some seeds with them. And as they wandered high and low across the twins, he'd plant them wherever they stopped for water. Every elder since has done the same. So when we finally put down roots here in Mesidia, the flowers did too. Excuse me. I wonder, might you be able to spare a basket of Elder's Blessings? Pavard's wife tasked me with collecting some for her husband and suggested that I speak to you. Ah. Werda wants you to bless her better half with the fruits of our labor, does she? Go on then. Give the old fool something to squirm about. I'm sorry. Ah, don't worry about it. An old fool Pavart may be, but if you come bearing gifts, he's not fool enough to turn you away. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. <sighs> what do you want? Your wife asked me to bring you these flowers. woman. Come out, I know you're there. H who? Me? <laughs> <clears throat> Would either of you care to explain what's going on? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to deceive you. It's just, my husband can be a bit standoffish at times, and I thought... This might be a good way for the two of you to get acquainted. What with you being a swordsman like and him being the only smith in the village. It'd be a shame if you couldn't turn to him for help. The only reason he couldn't turn to me for help is because I had my hands full with all the orders you lot dumped on me. I'm pretty much done with them now, though. But for the record, the tributary said that we were to lend you outsiders our aid, and that's exactly what I was planning to do with or without my darling wife's meddling. Still, here we are, acquainted. So if there's out you need, just bring us the materials, all right? All right. All right, then. And tar for the flowers. I was running low. You use them for dyeing, I hear. Aye. Crush the petals and it makes a fine and lasting blue. We use it to stain the cloth for our tunics and pennons. To remind us where we come from, like. As moats of water. Children of the sea. That's right. The pattern, too, was left by our ancestors. The ceaseless rill, it's called. It symbolizes the river of our tribe, with the strength of Leviathan running through it. And no matter how that river has ebbed flawed, changed its course. The flowers have always been with us, growing on our banks. <clears throat> I should get back to work. If you need something crafting, let me know. I will. It was a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Wasn't it just... Where in the blue? 
Oh, I'll have her hide when she gets back. Oh, sorry. I was leagues away. How can I help you? If you're after something from the storehouse, it's actually my wife you'll want to talk to. She will have to charge you for the goods, though. Not that we'd fleece you or anything. It's just, you know, needs must. I understand. Saying that, she might not be able to get anything down for you for a bit. Ah, right. She's got her hands full with the inventory, you see. It should have been my daughter's job, really, but the willful little Rills decided to make herself scarce. Ah, the heavens only know where that girl's got to. If you'd like me to keep an eye out for her. Oh, no. I couldn't ask that of an outsider. Could I? You wouldn't mind? Of course not. She won't have gone far, will she? I hope not. But I've scoured the entire village for her and come up empty-handed. <laughs> Can't help thinking she might have gone on another one of her little adventures. Ah. A free spirit, is she? Aye, that she is. Can't get her to sit still. Especially once you heard you lot were on your way. Outsiders! You should have seen her little eyes light up. Oh, if she wanted to watch you arrive, she should have made for the low gate where you first came in. The guard there might have spotted her. Maybe you could ask him. Uh, Ruka, her name is. All right. I'll let you know if I find her. Try not to worry. Excuse me. You haven't seen the storekeeper's daughter, have you? Little Ruka? I have, as it happens. She went out through the gate not long ago. Out of the village? Alone? Aye, she does it all the time. There's a path off to the left which leads down to the river. Nice little spot, that. And safe as you like. The beasts of the mountain don't dare come so close to the village. That's where she'll be. Go and have a look if you don't believe me. I will. It's you! I've been looking everywhere for you. You must be Rooker. You know my name? Can you lot read minds? <laughs> Your father asked me to keep an eye out for you. You left without telling him where you were going. He was worried. But I went to look for you. Well, now you found me. What do you say we head back to the village and let your father know you're safe? All right. And on the way home, you can tell me all about the world beyond the wall. I want to know everything. <laughs> everything might be a stretch. Thank you for bringing her home. And I'm sorry for the trouble. Oh, no. It was a pleasure. Daddy, did you know that there are villages ten times as big as Haven in the outside world? Ten times! Cities, they call them. And in these cities, they have great big walls and towers and castles. Oh, <laughs> to think I was worried. You can tell me all about the outside world later, sweet pea. Now go and help your mum with the stores. All right. <laughs> Thanks for putting up with her questions. She, uh, has a lot of them. One of the big ones being, what are the people beyond the wall like? Reckon you've made a good first impression. Are we the only ones she's ever met? That you are. The rest of the world can't know we're here, so we'll have to be very careful who we're letting in and out. A few of us might make the occasional trip to shore for supplies, but for the most part, we'll make do with what we've got, including what the old northern has left us. Yes. You built on top of the old ruins, didn't you? Well, they make for fine foundations. Their masons clearly knew what they were doing. That's one thing we don't have to worry about. <laughs> oh, it's everything else that's the problem. Medicines, metals for tool making, anything like that. 
We have to dress up as traveling merchants and make a trip to the outside and pray to every cloud in the heavens that nobody sees through us. Uh, which explains why you need Gil. Aye. And now Rook is back, my wife should be free to assist you with any potential purchases. So please, do make good use of our stores, because we fully intend to make good use of your coin. <laughs> I'll be sure to keep my purse strings loose. Thanks for bringing me daughter back. I don't grudge her looking for adventure, but she's got to pull away like the rest of us. Anyway, now we've got the inventory done, I can attend to my own tasks, like seeing to our visitors' needs. So, was the route you wanted? You said before that the child is bound within the surge. But you've yet to tell us how we're meant to reach him. I trust we won't have to hold our breath. No. The surge wraps around the cape without engulfing it. If we continue to its tip, there is a path down to the seabed. And the wave's origin. All right. It won't be the first dominant we've met at the bottom of the ocean. It's not much further now. The path seems well kept. Do you and the villagers often come this way? Only me. Once every new moon without fail. It is my duty both as village elder and Walius's descendant. But surely no one blames you for what happened. Why should you bear the responsibility alone? You misunderstand. I do it because I want to. To show him that he isn't alone, and that there are still some of us who would see an end to his suffering. Suffering you will soon witness with your own eyes. Down in the centre. Follow me. He's still primed. I'll never forget my first priming. The fear. And I was old enough to understand what was happening. One can only imagine how this poor child felt. He is the victim of an unforgivable sin. Committed by people who saw him as nothing but a means to an end. He must be so frightened. Then I'll ease his burden. You don't mean... I'm not going to hurt him. Contrary to the tales, I don't go around killing dominance for no reason. What if I told you there was a way to remove Wallace's icon? I tell you, you were a madman. It's hard to believe, I know. But it can be done. Though... It isn't without his risks. Part of the icon remains no matter what. So, it might still come to violence? I don't know. It depends on the dominant. 
I've seen things end well, and I've seen things spiral out of control. But I do know one thing. If we turn our backs on this child, there will be no end to his suffering. And I think that a worse fate than the alternative. Don't you? Very well. Do what you must. And whatever happens, I will own the consequences. Don't be afraid, little one. Let me bear the weight. I think so. I can feel the icon inside me. But something's wrong. Is everyone all right? He seems calmer now. You said Walius was frozen in time. But he knew we were here. How? I... I don't know. He's never reacted to anything or anyone. Until now. The child has been bound for nigh on a century. If he has been conscious from the first, we must remove the seal at once. It's not that simple. I wish it were, but... There's more to this tale. It would be better if I explained back at the village. I see. Then let's return before it gets dark. I'm sorry, Walius. I will make this right. So, part of Leviathan is inside you now, is it? Does it hurt? No. Not anymore, anyway. Good. Because I still have need of your strength. If you want to know the rest, we should head to the Witten Hall. Of course. To understand the spell which binds Walius, you must first know who we are, and what drove my forebears to commit such an atrocity. This... Tapestry is our story, the one that brought us here. After generations of wandering, my people sought refuge in Northeastern Storm some 170 years ago. But in exchange for our safety, 
The Gregorian Church demanded we renounce our faith and branded us heretics when we could not. To be exterminated as a lesson to others. And so was it chronicled in the Imperial histories, for anything less would have made the Church seem weak. Yet a handful survived. The few who did fled north and west, and in doing so discovered two things that would forever shape our fates. The first was an old legend, revealing how to make your very own Mother Crystal. I've heard that one before. Yes, yet it gave them new hope, however false. Our ancestors convinced themselves that they could recreate the Divine, if they could only find a strong enough heart. A living being capable of channeling torrents of ether. And the heavens provided. A dominant warriors. They had stumbled across a nostrum in an ancient ruin, which they believed could provoke a sudden outpouring of a creature's ether. They meant to enrage his icon. Leviathan would have destroyed everything, had our people not made their second important discovery. A means to stop time itself. Where did they find that? The Northerners had no such magic, so they would have used them. When our ancestors first arrived, the land was uninhabited, save for an old witch who lived on the highest peak. Her body had been consumed by the curse, a cruel payment for her long years of service to the Northern Thanes. So desperate were they to prevent the fall of Drake's eye, they'd forced her to devise a spell to stop time. But Drake's eye did fall. It did. When she finally perfected the necessary magics, it was already too late. As punishment for her failure, the Thanes exiled her to this forsaken place to live out the few days she had left. Knowing her suffering, our ancestors cared for her as best they could, and in return, she gifted them her spell. That even though she should die, her legacy might live on. So armed with both the knowledge of the ancients and the secrets of time, our ancestors settled upon an ambitious plan. They would create a new Mother Crystal and enchant it that it might endure for all eternity. Thus would our people's wandering, our suffering, finally end, and prosperity visit us once more. And all it would require was the sacrifice of a single child. A small price to pay, or so they believed. Another victim of man's blind reliance on the Mother Crystals. So we know the seal source. How do we break it and restore the flow of time? Do you recall the Dome of Light on top of the cliffs to the west? Inside lie the ruins of an old temple. It was there that the witch built the Vair, a conduit of sorts that channels her remaining ether into the surge. But it's been a long time since anyone set foot in the place. And now, there are others who claim it as their own. Then we shall go prepared for a fight. That said, it may be best if one of us stays behind. You think the village could be in danger? We saw the ether flow from Wallius in all directions, but only encountered a single familiar. There will be more. And should even one make its way here, I doubt the walls could hold it back for long. Then I shall stay. The Phoenix will see your people safe, Tributary. You have my thanks. Very well. We should depart at once. I fear time may no longer be a luxury we can afford. <coughs> Just <coughs> try to breathe. That's it. Is everything all right? Ah, you're the outsider. I'm Fanit, healer by trade. 
And this is Tallow, <coughs> one of my patients. He took ill not long after you arrived. Nothing too serious, I hope. I hope so too, but... But? This affliction, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. He complains of feeling chilled to the bone, but there's no fever to go with it. And my most powerful antalgic hasn't done a thing to ease the pain in his chest. I'm starting to wonder if his condition might require a different kind of treatment altogether. Shula said that you were here to help us. You couldn't help me, could you? I'd be happy to, if I can. You can, don't worry. All I need you to do is speak to Talor's son, Pavat, <coughs> over at the forge, and ask if he knows what his father was up to before he came down sick. Something must have caused this, and I want to find out what. The trouble is, Talor's too weak to speak, and I can't leave his side for long. So while you talk to Pavat, I'll pay his wife word a quick visit, just in case she knows anything. All right. Oh, uh, do you need something? I do, though not from the forge. Fanit asked me to speak with you. She's looking into the cause of your father's illness and wondered if you could shed any light on the matter. I see. Sorry. She shouldn't have dragged you into this. It's no trouble, really. Tell me, did your father do anything out of the ordinary before he fell ill? Not that I know of, but then I hardly see him. He's always out and about, like. Well, at least he was. Suppose he might have been a bit more... fidgety than usual, but apart from that... When you say out and about, where does he usually go? Just round the village. Wanders over to Blazia's place most days. He's a fisher who lives on the other side of the fount. They're old friends. Maybe he knows something I don't. Maybe. I'll go and speak with him. Greetings, stranger. What can I do for you? Your name is Blazir, is it not? Pavard tells me you're a friend of his father's and that the two of you may have spent some time together prior to his illness. His illness? Talor's never been ill a day in his life. I don't know why he'd start now. Oh, Fanny doesn't know either. It was she who asked me to look into his recent behavior on the off chance it might explain how his condition arose. Oh, uh, I suppose there was something that struck me as a bit odd. He kept asking about the woods. Did you see anything strange on your way back from the shore? Are you certain? Do you swear? That kind of thing. I didn't, of course. But he wouldn't let it go. It was like he was expecting something to happen. It was just a matter of when. Not that I know what. But he never told me anyway. Well, that certainly does sound unusual. And it might just be what Fanet is looking for. Thank you. Ah, don't mention it. Oh, and when you say to law, uh, wish him the best from me, eh? I spoke with Word, but she couldn't tell me anything. Did you have any better luck? <coughs> Nothing conclusive. But there was one thing. Blazir, the fisherman, told me that Talor had taken a sudden interest in the forest of late. He kept asking him if he'd seen anything unusual there on his way back from the coast, but never let on what exactly he was expecting him to have seen. The forest between here and the coast? Surely not. But then... But then... I can't say for sure, but I think Talor's illness might have some connection to the Tombreys. You may have encountered them. During your time here, the small, scaly beastmen. And you think they may have caused Talor's illness? I do. <laughs> At least in a way. And if I'm right, it's no wonder the treatments I've been trying didn't work. Oh, I know it's a lot to ask, but would you go down into Father's Fell for me? 
There's an altar there. And if my fears are true, an offering upon it. What is going on here? Please, I'll explain everything when you return, but time flows fast. I beg you, make haste for Father's Fell and take the offering from the altar. Talor's life may depend on it. Very well. <coughs> Ty, take me, what am I gonna do? You! You've got to help me. Shula said you were a force to be reckoned with, are you? Uh, why do you ask? Hey? Oh, sorry, I should explain. My name's Kitav. I'm worried about a friend of mine. He went into the forest and he hasn't come back. Would you help me find him? I can try. Tell me what I need to know. Of course. Uh, you know about the glamour our ancestors cast to keep this place hidden, right? Shula told us about it, yes. Right, so you know the cairns we use to maintain the spell? Well, it's me and my friend's job to maintain them. If it weren't for the likes of us, it would have faded years ago. So your friend went into the forest to visit one of these cairns? Aye, that's right. He said he was going down to Father's Fell. There are two cairns out that way, one by the banks of the Swift Run and another near the Winged Wains, the, uh, ships in the forest. All right. How will I know this friend of yours? His name's Nasef. He's about my height, but clean-shaven. If you could track him down and see that he's come to no harm, I'd be much obliged. I'll search the village, just in case anyone's seen him, and meet you back here. Very well. There is a matter with which I would beg your aid. Of course, what is it? Please, not so loud. Something serious, then? Yes. I think we might have company. I was passing by the low gate when I saw a figure moving among the trees upon the cloak. At first, I thought it must have been you or your brother, so I didn't say anything, but... But the more I think about it, the more certain I am that the figure looked... familiar. Then you're sure it wasn't one of the other villagers? Positive. I think it was someone from outside the wall who has found his way inside. Of course, it could just be my imagination playing tricks on me. I only caught a fleeting glimpse, and it might have been you or your brother. But if it is who I think it is, we cannot allow him to leave now that he knows we're here. Would you go and see? Oh, he won't try to hurt you, believe me. Given what lurks in the forest, the only one likely to get hurt is him. Very well. Whether the man you saw is who you believe him to be or not, we need to know. It may yet be someone else entirely. Someone who means your people, or my people, harm. Perhaps. Just promise me that if you do find someone up there... Don't worry. I won't draw my sword unless I need to. Thank you. Yamila, this man you saw... Might he be the customer you told me of? I fear so. The customer? I'll explain later. Come on. Are you a rider by any chance? I am. What gave me away? Oh, I can smell it on you. The scent of the stables. And not just any stables. Something tells me you've never been one to ride half-starved birds with chine gall and wet beak. If I had a guess, I'd say your bird eats only the finest greens and has her feathers groomed twice a day with a curl hairbrush. <laughs> Nothing but the best for my Ambrosia. Ambrosia, eh? Pretty name. What's she like? Well, she's... Tall and strong. 
and her feathers are as white as snow. You're joking. You've got a white chocobo. I have, yes. I suppose they are rather rare. This I've got to see. Can you bring her here? I would if I could, but I doubt Shula's skiff could hold her. Me dad's got a boat, and he's very chocobos before. You could get him to bring her. It'd be perfect timing and all. He's preparing for a trip beyond the wall as we speak. I'm sure he'd help you if you asked. He would. Well, I don't suppose it would hurt to have Ambrosia around. All right then. Where could I find your father? He'll be in the storehouse on the other side of the brook. Tell him Manda sent you. You one of the outsiders then? I am. Shula invited me. Are you Manda's father? I am. <laughs> Got you running errands for her already, has she? She's asked to see my chocobo, but I'd need your help and your boat to bring her here. <sighs> or you could just say it no. Honestly, that girl and her birds, she'll be growing feathers soon enough. Well, truth be told, I didn't take the idea seriously at first. But thinking about it, it would make it easier to get around if I had Ambrosia here. Can you help? <sighs> If you're sure, that's what you want. The tributary says where to treat you lot as we would each other. So, if you need me to ferry your bird over, then that's what I'll do. Still, they don't take the water easily. I'll need you to bring us a mimic goat or two to keep her calm on the journey over. And uh, where would I find one of those? Well, don't ask me. It's been years since I last brought a chocobo across the bay, and I'm told the world's changed a fair bit since then. Where do you usually get your stable supplies from? Well, the man who made Ambrosius tack lived in Martha's Rest, and if I remember correctly, he traded in chocobo feed too. So I suppose I'll go and ask him. I'll be sailing over to Northreach soon to pick up some supplies. While I do that, you collect your bird and your gourd, and then meet me by the shore. Just don't take too long, all right? I remember you. You're the one who saved Whiteheart. How's the old girl doing? She's very well. Thank you. Oh, don't thank me. You're the one who saved her. Anyway, what brings you to the rest today? I was hoping to purchase a Mimit Gourd. And I thought you might be able to tell me where I could find one. Oh, reckon I could do better than that. Just so happens, I've got a whole carload of the blasted things, not a buyer in sight. Really? Aye, you'd be doing me a favor taking a few off my hands before they turn to mush. But just be on the lookout for wild birds, eh? <laughs> Don't want them chasing after you like they did me. <laughs> I will. And thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Any friend of Whiteheart is a friend of mine. And in times like these, friends have got to stick together. We certainly do. Ah, there you are. And this must be... Ambrosia, was it? Oh, she's a real beauty, isn't she? I have the mimic or two. Here. Thank you kindly. Soon as she's gobbled this up, we'll set sail. We're going to take a little trip across the bay now, Ambrosia. Don't worry. You'll be all right. Well, we made it. You did and all. <laughs> she is as 
white as snow. You're beautiful, aren't you, girl? Brave, too. She was calm as you like on the journey over. The mimic gourd will have played its part, of course, but passing through the walls enough to spook most birds even then. Not this one, though. Ambrosia's been through a lot. I doubt there's much that could unnerve her now. Not with a beloved master by her side. No. It's you who looks after me, isn't it, girl? Anyway, thanks for bringing her here. I hope I can breed a bird like her someday. And if you and Ambrosia need ferrying back to Northreach, you only need say the word. Thank you. But I think we might explore Missidia together. What do you say, Ambrosia? A bottle. Breath of the Arbor. Perfume from Sunbrag. Looks expensive, too. Who's there? Stop! Are you all right? I'm more than all right. I'm saved! Oh, I could kiss you! Maybe you should introduce yourself first. Hervey! I knew it was you! What are you doing here? I came to see you. Oh, my little canary, it's been so long. Thank you for saving him and sparing him. Who is he? Hervey, one of many clients from my employment beyond the wall. One of many clients? We spoke every night of our plans together, whispered songs of love into each other's ears. And then you upped and vanished without so much as a word. I left you a note, didn't I? I told you I was sorry, but that we could never be together. That I could never abandon my family. And I told you not to look for me. How did you even find this place, anyway? The flame of your love was as a beacon in the night that guided me to you. Hervey. Uh, I was walking by the coast near Northreach when I saw a lady who looked like you. Eyes like the ocean. Hair like the driven snow. The next moment, she and her companions were jumping in a skiff and sailing out towards the wave. So I, uh, borrowed the nearest boat and started rowing. It must have been Shula bringing us here. So what? You rode, found a nose how many leagues across the bay, simply because you saw a woman with white hair. And as I did, the skies changed from a dull and hopeless grey to a bright and benevolent blue. That was when I knew for certain that my little canary was close. Oh. Why did you come? You should have forgotten me, as I tried to forget you. I cannot leave my people, Hervey. And now that you know about this place, neither can you. We must return to Haven and accept my family's judgment. I'm to meet your family. Oh, my little canary! <sighs> Please, come and see me later. You did as I asked, and you must be rewarded for it. But first, follow me, Hervey. Ah, to the end of the world and beyond. Forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. 
You two met at the Vale, I take it. When I worked there, yes. To earn the coin that my people need to survive. Though Mycidia is our sanctuary, there are certain necessities that it cannot provide. And for that reason, some of us seek employment beyond the wall. Yet few are the opportunities for followers of a strange faith in a strange land. And so you supported your family as best you could? I did. And I have never regretted it for a moment. I found a second family in the Vale. And in the Dame, a second mother. I also found Hervey. But our love could never be. I knew that if I revealed my secret to him, I would be putting my people in danger. But that if I did not, I would be living a lie, unable to return home. What will happen to him now? Since our people settled in Mesidia, uninvited visitors have been few and far between, but not unknown. Explorers, survivors of shipwrecks, none lasted long. I see. That was before my time, you understand. I've never had to make a decision like this before. Yamila. Nor that I do not blame you for any of this. It was me who decided to make the trip to shore. Me who exposed our secret. This was my mistake, and I shall bear the responsibility. Thank you, Tributary. I only hope, I only beg you to remember that Hervé means us no ill will. He's just a fool. A fool who loves me. I will take that into consideration. But yours is not the only voice I must listen to. The whole family must be consulted, and it may take time for me to arrive at my decision. I hope you understand. Of course, Tributary. However long it takes. Come what may, I thank you, my lord, for bringing us back together. What are they up to? Some sort of ritual? Sorry to disturb you. <sighs> Let's see what's on this altar then. Silver chain. I doubt the Tombrys made it. This must be what Fennet was talking about. Well, here's the can. But no sign of Nasef. To the riverbank, then. I'm looking for a man named Nasef. Aye, I know him. Takes care of the cans. Wait, you didn't think I was him, did you? Sorry, mate, I'm just out to gym me sell a few ibexes. What do you want with the lad, anyway? Uh, uh... His friend, Katav, asked me to look for him. Apparently he ventured out to work on one of these cans, and didn't return. Well, that is a worry. You're a hunter, yes? You must know the woods as well as anyone. Can you think where he might have gone? Uh, there's a bridge further down the path. Blasted thing got washed away a few moons back. Our carpenter only recently had time to rebuild it. 
But if I remember rightly, there is another cairn on the far side. Maybe he decided to visit that one while he was here. Maybe it's worth a look, certainly. Thank you. Don't mention it. I'll keep an eye out, too. Perhaps he just got delayed or something. Let's hope so. Oh, thank you. Uh... I'm the tributary's guest. And you must be Nasef. I am? But how do you know that? Your friend Katav asked me to look for you when you didn't return. Ah... Uh, I'm sorry. I was so focused on attuning the cairn, I didn't see those creatures come until it was too late. How exactly do they work? Oh, that there are crystals inside. They're what keeps the glamour going. Should the ether cease to flow through too many of them, our shroud would quickly unravel. It's my job to make sure that doesn't happen. And an important job it is. But you'll struggle to do it if you're dead. You need to take more care. Yeah, no arguments there. The truth is, me and Katav usually work together, watching each other's backs like. But when we heard outsiders were coming, we split up to get the job done faster, so things would be perfect for your arrival. <sighs> Stupid, I know. So you found him then? Not before the local fauna did. My arrival seemed to put them off their dinner. <laughs> Mustn't have been hungry after all. Expect you'll be wanting someone to escort you back to the village then, Nasef. Woods are full of nasties today. When you're next in Haven, be sure to come and see us. You saved my life. It's only right I repay you. If you insist. Take care now. You're back. Well, did you find anything? I did. This silver chain. I knew it. Well, I'm still none the wiser. Forgive me. This chain. It's a Gregorian Matanoster. Worn by men of the faith. What's it doing here? And why would the Tombaris be praying to it? To understand that, you need to understand what the Tombaris are. They feed on hatred and suffering. And some say that if you render them an offering, some token of grievance against your fellow man, they will put a curse upon him. So you think someone's put a Tombri curse on Talor? I can't say for sure. Truth be told, I always assumed it was an old wives' tale. But given his fear of the forest and the presence of the chain on the altar, I, I don't know what else to think. Does Talor have any enemies in the village? Anyone who would nurse such a grudge? No. No, I believe the one who left the chain at the altar was Talor himself. I beg your pardon? But there's more to the tale, you see. It's said that if you attempt to curse a soul that has returned to the sea already, your ire has nowhere to go but back to its source. You're saying he cursed himself? In trying to curse another, I. When my father was younger, he was one of the few permitted to venture beyond the wall on trading expeditions. He told us that when he journeyed to Sandbreck, He'd wear that chain to disguise his true beliefs, lest Grieger's faithful turn their cudgels on him. Did they ever catch him in his deception? Might that explain the ill will he bears someone? Not that he ever told me. Come now. Let's not waste time speculating about Talor's past. 
We need to focus on the present, and that means finding a way to break the curse. All right. If there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Thank you. I shall. Aye, and thanks for going to all this trouble. Here, it's not much, but I, I want you to have this. We call it an adder stone. It's a gatherer's charm. Reacts to certain rare minerals we use in crafting. Makes them ring out like a bell. Stuff you'd have no chance of spotting otherwise. If you find anything, see that you bring it back to me. I can make you some decent gear with it. If you're interested, like. I am, thank you. And I'll be sure to pay you a visit. Until then, I wish your father a swift recovery. So to it, then. Thank you. Nasev told me everything. If you hadn't got there when you did... Oh, it doesn't bear thinking about. All that matters is that you're safe. Far be it from me to tell you how to do your jobs, but... Don't go alone again. Or if we have to, maybe we should think about casting the glamour on ourselves to keep the wildlife from spotting us. It'd take its toll, of course. But it'd beat letting the cairns fall and having to weave the entire spell from scratch. Imagine if we had to do that. <laughs> I'd rather not. We'd only succeed in adding two new piles of stone to the collection. Your bearers? That we are, thank the tides. The others can't attune to the crystals in the cairns the same way we can. Reckon this place would be doomed without us. <laughs> so... You do this work for the good of your people. Not because... We're forced to. No. From what I've heard of the way things work on the outside, we were truly blessed that our rain fell here in Mysidia. Our people are few enough as it is. If we started turning on each other, kin against kin, over nothing but a stupid accident of birth, our days would be numbered. They would. Anyway, all's well that ends well, eh? Thanks to you, both of us live to keep this place hidden another day. Do you see that cave up ahead? Whoever lived here carved a flight of stairs into the stone within. Away to the top. And whatever it is that awaits us there. There, the temple the time forgot. And the various inside? Yes, you can see the spell's path from the nave. What is it? I... I don't know. It's probably nothing. Did. The weaker ones. Did you hear that, Sid? Just 
like the surge. Hmm. Another of my ancestors' sins. Shall we? Shula, wait. Before we cross the threshold, I'd like to know a little more about how these magics work. I assume we'll be safe from their influence. We won't grind to a halt, if that's what you mean. The spell only affects the things that were present at the moment it was cast. things can as well like the ones we saw on the way here and worse probably Familiar, yes. I sensed it the moment we arrived, though I wasn't sure until now. You can feel it too, can't you, Clive? She's calling us. You don't mean... the witch? I do. Though she was more than that. Much more. She was a dominant. A dominant who once commanded the icon that now resides in both me and Clive. Of course. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't see it. Who else would have the power to freeze time? None other than Shiva herself. But for her ether to endure after all these years, it... It's almost as if... As if she shared it with another, just as Torgal shared in my ice. Destroy it and put an end to this. Wait. 
The spell must be weakened, not undone. Uh, isn't that what we came here for? Did you ever stop to wonder what might happen to the tidal surge if I unraveled the whole spell at once? I didn't think so. This is going to require a bit more finesse. From wind and light, water and earth, let the silent pall of my ice I think so. The thread connecting this place to the child should be broken. Meaning Walias should finally be... Free once more. Leviathan, our most profaned fragment. Its divinity defiled by the hand of man. Its spirit shackled by his hubris, till new thoughts came, bringing release. Now, let the sins of man be redeemed by the hand of the servant of God. what I wanted. 
I only hope you can forgive me.
get a tantrum. Clive, where is he? Well, yes. him a few moments ago. <laughs> Clive, I... I don't know how to thank you. It's all right. We should find him a dry blanket, though. Wouldn't want the little monster catching a cold. There. He's finally asleep. The poor thing had a long day. That makes two of us. So... What happens now? Now? Now, we make things right. How? by providing Walias what he was denied. A place to learn and grow. A family to love and protect him. So that one day, when the wounds in his heart and mind have finally healed, he might decide for himself how he'd like to live the rest of his life. But until then, I'll stay by his side, come what may. Then he's a lucky boy. And not only because he'll have the best warrior this side of the belt to teach him the battle axe. Hm. She'll do her best. Shula. The beast that threatened your home is tamed. The empire that threatened your people toppled. Might it not be time to cast off your ancestors' glamour and retake your place in the twins? Perhaps. It's not as if we have the crystals to maintain the wall much longer. But are we truly safe? Is the world truly ready to accept us for who we are and what we believe? If I remember rightly, you and yours still choose to remain hidden, do you not? We do. Well, your people will always be welcome in Haven, regardless. As will yours in the hideaway. We're allies now. If there's anything you need from us, supplies, food, equipment, do not hesitate to ask. It's kind of you to offer. But we'll manage, just as we always have. Besides, I suspect you'll be needing everything at your disposal if you're going to save the world. I fear much of it is past saving. The best we can do is strive to turn what's left into a world where we can all live as equals. A noble endeavor. And there'll be a place in this world for us, will there? For Walias. For everyone. I swear it. Then we shall be waiting until the tides bear you back to shore.
Do you think he'll be all right? Walias. Only time will tell. But I can certainly think of worse places to spend one's childhood. The moats of water are a fine people, and they will take good care of him. Up by the Vare, Ultima spoke to me. She called Leviathan his most profane fragment, and told me to redeem the sins that had laid him low. Is that so? The sins of Walius' ancestors were grave indeed. To force him to prime at so tender an age. And to freeze him in time. That he might never know what it was to live. Yet I doubt either of those crimes was the source of Ultima's displeasure. It was that the Icon's power had been put to another purpose than the one he intended. To him. Leviathan must have seemed an aberration. Could that be why Ultima made no attempt to lead me to him? The fear that this profane fragment might corrupt his vessel somehow? Perhaps. Or perhaps he simply deemed Leviathan surplus to requirements. Having concluded that his vessel might be made to serve his purposes without the full sum of his power. His purposes? There's no escaping them. Even here. Hidden away in Mesidia, the blessing of the crystals proved nothing but a prison. A prison into which Walius was born, and from which freedom is hard won. If the world doesn't change, if we don't change it, he'll end up suffering the same fate as every dominant who came before him. Then we must change it. That we must. And we shall. I think I might have found a way to break to Law's curse. Go on. Well, after listening to the village elders and scouring every likely looking tomb in the library, I learned that not all Tombries are the same little green menaces we know and loathe. Apparently, a chosen few live to incredible ages and grow to many times the size of their counterparts. The folk tales hold that it's the very eldest of these, the Tombury kings, who weave the curses, and that their magics bind their victims to them, that they might continue to feed on their pain. So if we slay the one that cast the curse, the feeding will cease. But that was my thinking, yes. Though I doubt it'll be easy. These kings are not just bigger, they're stronger too. And if the tales are true, their followers will defend them to the death. It is a perilous proposition, in short. But it may also be Talor's only hope. What say you? I'll do it. Even if killing this king doesn't break the curse, Mesidia will be a safer place for his removal. Thank you. So then, where will I find it? <sighs> that, alas, I do not know. It must have woven the curse at the altar in Father's Fell, but as to where it is now. Fanet! You were the one asking about Tonbreeze, right? Because there's a whole bloody army of them out on the cloak! What? But, but why would this stray so far? And why now? There's only one way to find out. I'll head up the mountain and see what's going on. Right. Thank you. And please, be careful. Mister, you've got to help us. The village is in danger, and if someone doesn't do something, uh, you should have seen it. Stop. Take a deep breath and tell me everything, starting with your name. Sorry, my name's Eric. When you went up to the air of hours with Miss Shula, I, well, I followed you. <sighs> you could have been killed. Lady Shula told us you lot were great warriors. So I thought 
I'd be all right if I stayed close, like. But then I lost track of you in the woods, and that's when I saw it. Saw so what? A great, big, dripping, twirling monster. Spitting out great spots of water it was that were tearing up the ground and cutting down trees. Spouts of water? I don't recall saying anything like that in the forest. Well, I did. And I don't ever want to see it again. You'll get rid of it, won't you? All right. If this creature is as terrible as you claim, it could well pose a threat to the village. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, mister. It was over by the swift one that I saw it. Maybe it's still there. Then that's where I'll start my search. But this time, you're going to stay here. Understood? I wouldn't go through those gates for ten hundred gil. Not with that thing out there. Good luck, though. My lord, might I have a moment of your time? I would beg of you a service. Certainly. What is it? It's a long story. But before we get to that, would I be right in thinking Lady Shula told you about the witch from the north? Yes. She said that your ancestors found her here, and that it was she who taught them the spell to stop time. She was like Walius, you know. A dominant. The Warden of Ice. My great-grandmother suspected as much. She cared for the poor woman when the end was near. And it was she whose duty became to attend her grave. A duty that was passed down to me. I see. And the service you would beg of me? Well, until recently, the path to the grave had long been blocked by a fallen tree. But when our woodsmen finally found time to move it, we quickly realized it might have been better had they not. On trying to clear the rest of the path, you see, we discovered that a flock of bloodthirsty beasts had claimed the cliffs beyond. None of us was a match for them. But you, my lord, have proven your strength many times over. Would you drive them away for us? Of course. I'll see the path is made safe. Thank you, my lord. The grave is in a place called Witch Drop. To reach it, one must turn left at the Winged Wains, then follow the path around to the right, deep into the forest. Why so far from Haven? It was where she lived. When our ancestors first came to Missidia, they found her there, in an old abandoned village. And it was her heartfelt wish to return there in death. So when she passed away, my great-grandmother had a stone erected for her, on the cliffs overlooking the place she once called home. How thoughtful. Well then, no time like the present. Left of the ships, then round to the right, you said. Just so. Thank you once again, my lord. I will join you at the grave anon. You wouldn't happen to have some time on your hands, would you, Clive? Only I was wondering if you might help me with something else. Don't tell me. Another unruly dominant. Not quite, but a dangerous foe nonetheless. It promises to be quite a hunt. Care to join me? All right. Tell me about our quarry. A fiendish, cold-blooded beast known as a Givra. Normally, we leave such animals well alone, and for good reason. But I have an even better reason to want its tongue. Uh, its tongue? If you'll permit me, Tributary, I can explain. Certainly, Yamila. It's been over a week since my sister gave birth to her first child, yet she still isn't back on her feet. We've tried everything to restore her spirits. Physics and nostrums, the laying on of hands and of leeches, but all to no avail. The healers tell me there's only one hope left. A broth as 
important as its ingredients are perilous to procure. It isn't only Yamila's sister who stands to benefit from this, by the way. There's her baby to think of, and Walias, too. She'd agreed to be his wet nurse, you see. I'd be glad to help. Thank you. Our hunters have no shortage of skill, but this task calls for more than that. And it won't be achieved through weight of numbers, either. The giver is as wary a foe as it is a deadly one. Two hunters might catch it unawares, but any more than that, and it would pick up our scent a league away. Then it is decided. The two of you will go, while Jill and I occupy ourselves here. Perhaps we might help prepare the broth. That would be most kind of you. Come then, Clive. The river of time flows fast, and so must we. There's a giver that has claimed the ruins at the foot of the mountain as its hunting ground. But as I say, they are wary creatures. We'll need suitable bait to draw it out. The flesh of a forest ibex should suffice. To the forest, then. I should buy Haven some time, at least. Clive! Are you all right? Fine. We've taken care of the immediate threat. Oh, thank the tides. I was worried I was going to lose you both. Till all he... Oh, he took a sudden turn for the worse just after you left. What? Is he...? No. He's hanging on. I fear the Tombury King may have begun the cursing ritual again, in earnest this time. And I can't imagine their being here as a coincidence. I think it might be happening on this very mountain. If it is, it won't be for long. Get back to Talor. I'm going up. My thanks. I shall pray for both of you. Looks like that's the last of them. Out here, anyway. But beastmen do like dark places. It is. I was going to ask if there had been any change in Talor's condition, but judging by that smile on your face, I think I already know the answer. You do? Talor! He's back! Thank you, my lord. I can never repay you for everything you've done for me. I owe you my life. I'm just glad the curse is lifted. There is one thing I'd like to know, though, if you don't mind my asking. What made you seek the Tombury's help in the first place? Oh, that, well, uh, you deserve to know. It was years ago now, back in my trading days. The sons of Greek arrested me in Oriflam, chained me up in a lightless cell with a great sword hung over my head, ready to fall if I didn't confess. Though they never said to what. I didn't, of course. So eventually they just let me go. And I never told a soul. Tried to forget it ever happened. But then you came along and the sight of your sword brought it all flooding back. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't hardly breathe. And I, I thought that if I gave my old chain to the Tombury's, maybe, maybe they could take all that pain away. All that anger. But it only made it worse. Oriflam has fallen. And the men who tortured you likely fell with it. <laughs> if 
only I'd known, I might have spared everyone a lot of trouble. I'd convinced myself that you were like them, that all outsiders were the same, but you're not. Far from it. Thank you, son. Thank you. Clive, there's something I need to tell you. After we parted ways on the path to the cloak, I went straight back to Talor and explained to him what you were doing on his behalf. And just like that, his pain began to fade. What do you mean, just like that? The Tumbra King would have still been alive. I had to contend with dozens of his minions before I found him. Then... Perhaps one of them warned him of your coming and he broke off his ritual. Or perhaps, perhaps knowing that an outsider was fighting for him was what lifted the weight from Talor's heart. I know from experience that many illnesses are not wholly physical, but of the spirit, at least in part. Was there ever really a curse then? was Talor simply suffering from the pain of his memories and the guilt of what he'd done for all the difference it makes I suppose we'll never know maybe not but this much I do know it was your strength and your selflessness that healed his heart in the end <laughs> I'll be sure to tell my healer friend when I get home It's you, ah, Nasef's savior. Are you all right? What happened? I was tracking an ibex when a great spout of water struck me square in the back, sent me flying all the way across the clearing. Did you see what made it? No. All I heard was a noise. An ear-splitting din. Might this be the culprit? Leave him to us. <sighs> well, that wasn't too bad. Hardly a threat to the village, but... You can't blame the boy for being scared. <laughs> you made that look a lot easier than it was. Do you think that was the beast which attacked you? That thing? Not a chance. Would have heard it coming a league away. And the blast of water that hit me was beyond anything an Archelon can manage. Oh. A boy from the village sent me in search of a beast that could conjure such things, but... That's it. That's the noise I heard. Sounded like it came from the ruins. I'll go. You head back to Haven and see a healer. Found her. Something's been busy. Whatever this creature is, it's out for blood. But it's not having ours. Stay close, Toggle. <sighs> Fingers crossed that's the last of them. Either way. 
I should let Irik know the danger is past. For now at least. You're back! So? Did you find the fiend that attacked me and young Irik here? I did. It won't be troubling you anymore. Yes! I knew you'd get it. Only because you warned me of its existence. Not that you should ever have learned of its existence, but... All's well that ends well, I suppose. What was it, anyway? A manifestation of Leviathan's power. When we visited Wallius in the Surge, he was... angry and afraid. The Icon summoned these creatures for his protection. Though why one would be wandering the ruins of Riversmeet, I don't know. Maybe it was looking for his mum. That's where she died, isn't it? The Falls. The Falls? Aye. When they took her baby, she threw herself off the top. We go there once a year to pay our respects. The whole village. Hmm. An Eggy is a part of its master's spirit, but... Wallius wouldn't have been aware of what had happened to his mother, would he? Well, either way, you did us a favor putting that thing to rest. Us and Wallius. Thank you. Aye. Thanks, mister. Looks like that's the last of them. Now... Where's the grave? This must be it. My lord. Thank you for making the path safe again. He's a... Was that her name? Yes. Hardly the most fitting tribute for a dominant, is it? A rough-hewn stone with naught but a given name engraved on it. But my ancestors had only been here a matter of weeks when she passed. Every day was a struggle to survive. They had neither the time nor the energy to devote to a more elaborate memorial. Yet they spared what they could to grant her wish, that even in death she might continue to watch over her home. She lived down there, then? In the ruins? That's right. They were once the living quarters for those who served up in the temple. When the Northern Thanes sent her here to weave her spell, this was where she and her retinue stayed. There were priests, handmaidens, and a knight sworn to shield her from harm. Of course, they were all gone by the time my ancestors arrived, fled or dead in the Western Wars. All except his A, who remained till the end, alone. Indeed. At least, that is the story as it's been handed down in Haven. But there is an epilogue to the tale, one known only to Lady Shula and myself. Some years after Issei's passing, you see, my grandmother came here to tend the grave and found a stranger kneeling before it. A knight, dressed head to toe in plate. She asked of him who he was and whence he had come, but received no answer. The only words he spoke were, tell me true, whose grave is this? So she told him of how her people had met and cared for Issei, and how she had died. His only reaction was to stare up at the air of ours in silence. Then he left, never to be seen again. You said he was wearing plate. Was it black and gold? Do you know something of him? When we went up to the air of hours to unravel the spell, we were set upon by a shade in the shape of a knight in full plate. It manifested in front of the Vare. 
And in its ether, I felt Shiva, the witch. You think this may have been the same man my great-grandmother met? He says night. I don't know. Maybe. All I can say for sure is it was intent on protecting her creation. Or perhaps her spirit. What remained of her ether, preserved in the Vare. Perhaps his spirit too became enraveled in her spell. Frozen in an eternal vigil. Till we ended it. If the shade you fought was Issei's knight, then ending it was the greatest gift you could have given him. Now he can return to the sea, to be with his lady once more. And if his spirit should ever return here to visit a grave, I shall ask his name, that I might carve it in the stone next to hers. That they might be together, once and for all. Return to the sea, and to the clouds rise again. We have our bait then. What next? Next we pay a visit to the dark gate to pick some local weed. It'll help disguise our scent. Is this it? Aye, that's the stuff. Crush the leaves between your fingertips and rub them on your clothes. Uh, if you insist. Oh, you could have warned me about the smell. Like corruption, isn't it? We'll have an honor guard of flies before long. But it'll stop the giver from noticing us. Its nose will tell it we're nothing but a feast for worms. Oh, I feel so much better. We can wash it off afterwards. If there's one good thing about the giver choosing the ruins for its hunting ground, it's that there's plenty of fresh water nearby. Marking his territory. Something was. A curl, maybe. Tracks. But... I assume they're too small to belong to a Givra. You're right. They're barely big enough to belong to a Givra's breakfast. A fresh kill. But not a Givras. The wounds are too clean, too small. These look like a predator's tracks. You can clearly make out the claws. But not just any claws. These belong to a Givra. There's no mistaking them. We'll lay the bait here. Let's hope our friend is hungry. <sighs> Still no sign. Patience, Clive. Hunting's not something you can rush. Have you stalked these beasts before? Once. Givers are fast, so the job called for a bearer. But even with my knack, it was a close-run thing. Not many leaders would take such risks for their people. Says the man who battled an icon to save a boy he barely knew. It is the way of the moats of water to use what gifts we've been given for the good of all. 
And I gather it's your way too. It was Sitz. The man whose name I bear. He fought for his people and their future with every fibre of his being. And I'm just following in his footsteps. In many ways, you remind me of him. Me? You're confusing daring with desperation. Quiet. Something's coming. Our guest has finally arrived. Shall we greet him? It'd be rude not to. exaggerating when you said they were dangerous. They're forces of nature, all right. And with this one's passing, the river of life has calmed. O roaring torrent, son of storms, may your spirit run free in the open ocean. This flesh I claim, that your gifts might rain down upon us this day, and our river flow in spate once more. Well then, let's return to the village. We must get this tongue to your miller before it spoils. Tributary, my lord. Did all proceed as planned? It did. Here. Yeah. One giver tongue, as promised. Oh, thank you. I shall add it to the broth at once. By your leave, tributary. If there is anything else that we can do to help, you need only ask. No, no. You've already done more for my family than I can ever repay. Just as you have, Clive, for my family. I only regret that I have nothing to offer you in return but my gratitude. It's more than enough. Besides, I'm no less grateful to you. For what? For welcoming my friends and I into your midst. For showing us how your people live. For reminding me that the world we strive to create, where bearers can live alongside their fellow men in peace and comfort, is no mere fantasy. I'd hardly call it comfort. Every day is a struggle. Though we do at least struggle together, it's true. As must we all. I only ask that you remember the cost of using your gifts as a bearer. I know that you feel it's your duty to do whatever you can to help your people. But you have a child to think about now. And Wallace has lost enough. I shall bear that in mind. That's all I ask. Oh, and if there is anything else that we can do to help, well, you know. Thank you. Truly. No, it has to be him. What has to be who? If you, uh, don't mind my asking. It's not your asking, I mind. It's my explaining. But I don't see any other way around it. You see, when a baby is born here, 
we hold a ceremony to welcome them. The rite of immersion, we call it. But I don't know whether Wallius was ever afforded that courtesy. What is abundantly clear, though, is that my ancestors never welcomed him as one of us. And I want to change that. The problem is, the ceremony requires three ministrators. The baby's parents and a witness. As tributary, the role of witness would normally fall to me. But being Wallius's closest living relative, I must play the role of mother. So you want me to serve as witness in your stead? That's right. A witness must be a trusty guardian, ready to steer the child through the stormy waters of life and on to tranquility, which is why I thought of you. It would be my honor. Thank you, Clive. So, if you will serve as mother and I as witness, who will take on the father's role? I have a younger brother. He should be making ready for the rite as we speak, though whether he is or not. <sighs> Let me introduce you. Please do. If he's anything like his sister, I'm sure we'll get on famously. I'll bid him come to the Witten Hall. Will you wait for us there? Gladly. Clive, my brother. If it isn't my old mate, Sid! You? So you do remember me, even stripped of my cunning disguise? I'm touched. You two know each other. My friends and I crossed paths with your brother on our hunt for the Dusk Crystals, during which we saved his life. Three times, was it? Three? Four? Who's counting? All I know is when Shula mentioned she'd called in Sid the Outlaw to help young Walias, I could be sure that the little rascal was in safe hands. I mean, having seen you in action back at the tower, I know exactly what you're capable of. So the mercenary you met in the Sage Spire, that was Clive. And he saved your life. That's a rather different story from the one you told me. And a far likelier one at that. It would appear my family owe you twice over. Whether they admit it or not. Honestly, Fammy, would it kill you to tell the truth once in a while? What? I said sorry, didn't I? How about we save the uh, recriminations until after the ceremony, eh? Speaking of which... What does this ceremony involve, exactly? It's simple, really. We each say a short prayer and anoint the child's head with holy water. Nothing too onerous, then? Not about the rite itself, no. But it does call for some preparation. One of the witnesses' responsibilities is to collect the holy water, you see. Three files for the three ministrators, each taken from a particular place. Don't worry, though. It's not as if you have to go alone. I can show you the way. I'd appreciate that. Famiel, you stay here and ready the Witten Hall. Leave it to me. If there's anything Jill and I can do to assist you... We'd be glad to help. Thank you both. All right then, let's get started, shall we? There are three types of holy water that we must collect. The water of the mountain, of the river, and of the sea. We take the water of the mountain from the spring atop Maiden's March. The water of the river from the course that flows through the ruins of Riversmeet. And the water of the sea from the shallows of Tailwind Bay. Here are the files we'll be using in the ceremony. I'm ready to leave whenever you are. Help! Help! 
What help? Nobody's coming to... Help? We're here to help. Is anyone hurt? Oh, Sid! Thank all the clouds in the heavens you came. You saved us. Again! Would you two care to explain what you're doing up here? The chief sent us. To fetch incense for the ceremony. So the Witten Hall smells nice. For the little Ben. <clears throat> you mean to tell me you braved this den of deadly beasts for some tree sap? You don't have to do everything he says, you know. Or if you must, at least have the good sense to ask one of our hunters to accompany you. We're sorry. It's fine. Just go back to the village before you get yourselves into any more trouble. Right you are. Oh, and there. Uh, thanks and that. Remind me to give my brother a cuff round the ear when we get back. The rain that falls on the mountain emerges here, in these springs. The source of the river. The source of life. Precisely. The water of the river represents life. It is constantly moving, constantly changing. And though its course may twist and turn or branch into a thousand separate streams, it always flows in the same direction, from source to sea, beginning to end like time. What of Wallius then? When your ancestors froze him, did they remove him from the river of life? They did. Like an ice-bound pool that didn't thaw for 80 summers. But now he's free to flow again, to live. And you and I shall flow with him, for we are all but drops of water in the great river of life. I find that thought oddly reassuring. Go on. A drop of water might seem insignificant on its own, but as a part of a torrent, it can cleave a path through the hardest rock. It makes me believe we humans might just stand a chance. I believe we might. Thank the tides, the weather held. This place can be treacherous when the waves are high. If it weren't for the holy water, no one would ever come down here. I'll be sure to watch my step. The water of the sea. I still can't help but be awed by it. Oh? All that wave ever made me feel was pity and sorrow for the innocent life trapped inside it. The child my great-grandfather sacrificed to try to change his people's fate. It was wrong. An unforgivable sin. But I often wonder, 
Will my descendants ever forgive me for what I have done? As tributary, I've faced many difficult choices. And though I've always striven to do what's best for my people, here we live in poverty, hidden away from the world. So have my choices denied them a better life, just as my ancestors denied Walius his. No. You would not forcibly sacrifice one of your people to save the others. You do the best you can for all of them, as do I. We share in their woes, just as we share in their joys. And the most we can do is try to bring them more of the latter. Aye, you're right. And try I shall to bring all of my people a better tomorrow. Walius included. <laughs> then I wish you luck. If my time with the boy is any indication, he's going to be quite a handful. <laughs> then we must start as we mean to go on and give him the very best welcome we can. We have the holy water. Is everything else in place? All ready to go. Told you you could count on me. Then let us begin. Famiel, have your men summon everyone to the Witten Hall. Right you are. Uh, Shula, wait. I don't know the words. Don't worry. There aren't many of them. We'll have time enough to practice before people arrive. My friends, we are gathered here today to welcome this child into our community by the right of immersion, as has been our custom since the first reign. As tributary, I would normally perform the rite with the child's parents, but Walius's mother and father returned to the sea long ago. So I and my brother Famiel shall serve as his family while the one who returned him to us shall bear witness in my stead. Clive, if you would step forward. Like the rain that falls on the mountains tall, are we born? Like the river that flows through the valleys below, do we live? See, where the currents run free, do we die, and to the clouds then rise again? The circle of water is the circle of life. And today, from the heavens falls rain anew. This child, Walius, now joins our stream, and he shall flow with us. 
from the mountains to the sea. You played your part to a T, Clive. Thank you. It means a lot to us. I was honored to be asked. And terrified I'd miss. <laughs> now that you're part of the family, young Walyas, my lad. Uncle Samuel can teach you the ways of the world. <laughs> oh, no, he can't. Eh? Don't be so hasty. Your brother's knack for self-preservation might serve him well. Ha! You are never going to let me live that down, are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to raise Walius as if he were my own. Teach him everything I know about life, our people, and our past. But with all the mother crystals gone, he will grow up in a world without comforts. One where we only have ourselves and each other to rely on. I'd say your people are better prepared than most to survive in such a world, Shula. To thrive, indeed, under your guidance. Only if nature continues to smile on us. If we were to lose her gifts, we'd be left with nothing at all. Yes. But it needn't come to that. Not if we can stop the spread of the Blight. So long as we can save a single patch of soil, we can plant the seeds for a new world. One where we can all be free. Perhaps then, we might finally be able to step out from behind our curtain, eh? Till that day comes, I wish you good tide. Thank you. We should be on our way. Well, you be careful out there. Aye, you steer clear of trouble now. <laughs> Likewise. Outsiders to have witnessed that rite in over a century. Walius has been waiting for it for nearly as long. He seemed pleased to be finally rejoining the family. Now all we have to do is save that family. To change our river's course. So...
is ours, and now it is yours. Consider it a gift from us to you, a taste of things to come. You still think I'm going to be your vessel? <sighs> Take your gift then, Ultima. Just... Don't expect it back. You... Who ever rail against our gifts... Remain all too eager to avail yourself of them. Perhaps you require more time to reflect. <laughs> <laughs>